Hi all and welcome to this video financial modeling blog tutorial. Today we're going to look at modeling a major maintenance reserve account. Okay, if you haven't already done so, please go to www.videofinancialmodeling.com slash blog and read the blog tutorial because that's going to give you some background about uh, major maintenance reserve accounts and why we use them. Um, uh, maybe I should touch on that uh, with a couple of points. A major maintenance reserve account is basically a cash account whereby you put money into the cash account um, and that money builds up over time uh, up to a point in time where you have some major life cycle capex or major maintenance. So usually the major maintenance schedule is very lumpy and uh, cash flow available for debt service or, or your EBITDA to a certain extent cannot support that lumpy cash flow. So that's why we need a reserving mechanism to reserve for that lumpy capital expenditure. Okay, so here we've got a question saying, assuming a CFADs of $20 million per annum, flat so we're not taking into account any inflation or growth in in revenue uh etc cetera, etc cetera. um we've got replacement capex of 25 million every 10 years and we're only going to assume two of these so maybe it's over a 30 year concession and you do two major capex replacements and we have no interest on the account. So this is simplified. Usually if you've got cash sitting in an account, you're gonna get interest on that amount, okay? We're gonna model the MRA reserving for CapEx evenly over a period of 10 years. So this is quite a simple MRA structure. Uh, you can get a bit more complex with these things. However, most times it's uh, cash flow is reserved evenly. Okay, so we're going to start by putting the year. Now we're going to put in zero here. I'm just going to paint that red. And we're going to go plus one. We're going to go all the way up to 30. Not that it matters. And then we're going to put in our CFADs. And we're going to put in 20. I'm going to color that blue. It's a unique input. And we are going to put in our replacement capex, capital expenditure. And we're going to have 25 here and 25 here. And I'm going to fill in some zeros in between. You don't have to do this, just to follow along with the logic. A zero here. Yeah, and all the way back here. And that should all be blue. And we're going to reserve over number of periods. periods and that's going to be 10 in this case okay I'm going to put that in blue as well okay so firstly we're going to do up a relative period so we're going to put in 15 relative periods so this means that we should put a note here saying uh, maximum of 15 okay so we can only reserve over a maximum of 15 periods um, we're going to actually, well, let's start putting our corkscrew account in. So opening balance, closing balance. If you haven't already done so, look at our corkscrew tutorial. But you use these so many times in so many different ways. Um, I can't stress enough uh, how much you need these, okay? So we're going to copy and paste. So in a corkscrew, obviously, the opening balance of the period is equal to the closing balance of the previous period. Now, 
this is going to be our replacement capex. So that's going to be cash flow coming out of the account. And all we're going to do here is go equals negative replacement capex. Now we can name that row, it doesn't matter. We're going to paste it across. And we're going to see those negative 25s. And we're also going to paste this across. So shift arrow up and then shift arrow across and control R and that'll give us our corkscrew. Now we have to reserve so we can say this is uh, money reserved, you can call it whatever you want. Um, let's put it, call it cash reserved and what we're going to do is we're going to reserve over 15 or 10 years here but we could change it to a maximum of 15. Maybe we'll try seven later on, but let's do it here. So 15 equals that take one. Gonna go all the way down to one. And we're gonna change all these so that they're formatted. So control shift arrow up to select that. We're gonna push the application key, which is like your right mouse button. We're going to go format cells. We're going to go and choose a custom. And we're going to go and change this. So we're going to go and let's put in reserve amount and number. So space number, OK? And you can see that comes up now with reserve amount. Or let's, sorry, that's not reserve amount. Let's change that to format cells and relative period. And we'll change this uh, to reserve amount up the top and total reserve amount. You can call it what you like, we're reserving cash. Okay, let's put that in there. So now what we're going to do is we're going to build a formula so that we can pick up an offset formula so that we can pick up how much cash we should be reserving. Okay, so what we're going to do firstly is we're going to make sure that because we're only from here down because we've got 10 reserve periods. We need a sort of indicator here to say whether um, we should be reserving in that for that relative period. So this relative period, 15 periods from now, so in this case it would be, we would be reserving up here. Yep. So let's go and let's go equals and bracket this one. So this relative period, we're going to lock the column on that so we can copy and paste this formula down. If that is less than or equal to this maximum amount, we're going to lock the cell. So just one F4 there. And so that's false there. So let's push enter. That's good and then times offset of the reference row. So this row here, comma, comma, and we're gonna go this one here. So you gotta get the column again locked here and we have to actually lock this one here as a row, okay? So we can copy it down and bracket divided by, and it's going to be the reserve periods because we're reserving equally, okay? So now let's see what happens for this block here. Let's go down and then can, whoop, and then shift arrow across and control R, 
and you'll see that it's zero. Now, hopefully when we copy this one down, we're going to get a number and we do. Okay, so we're going to copy this one down and we're going to copy it all the way across. And what we'll, what you'll see is a cascade pattern, right? So in period zero, what we want to do is we want to reserve, and let's just put the decimal places up on this so you can see it a bit clearer. You can see that there's 2.5 reserved each period, which is what we expected over a 10-year period for a, a $25 million capex. And we're going to reserve that amount. So you see, let's do this, copy that across. So control, shift, and control R to copy across or shift arrow across and control R. And now what we're going to do is we're going to reserve that cash in this account. So equals that and now all the way across and we should be reserving the exact amount. So at the end of this corkscrew, we should get zero, okay, which is the case. Now I'm just going to unhighlight this we're going to try a few things here. Now, one thing to note here is that we're reserving in this period. And we've said we've got no CFADs here. Now, what would be happening here is operations would be starting here. And this is where we start to get some money. Construction might have just finished back here. So what you'd have to do in your construction funding is you'd have to reserve for that amount of replacement capex and put it into a cash fund. Uh, if you've got any questions on that, feel free to post that um, and we'll answer your questions. Um, but I don't really want to go into it in this tutorial here. Now let's change this to, uh, let's say, five periods. You'll notice that it changes there. So we reserve for $5 million each year for five years prior to um, the capex in 2010 or in year 10. And it's a pretty nifty mechanism, uh, quite simple when you break it down. Uh, there's nothing too complex about this formula here. Uh, have a look at it. Like I said, if you've got any questions, feel free to, to post it and we'll get back to you with those with answers to those questions. We hope you've enjoyed this video or financial modeling video tutorial. And if you haven't already done so, join us on YouTube or join up to our newsletter. Thanks.